when I um, start the wellness report, I feel that how do I make the magazine of my own? Do I start it from business angle or what's the market one and yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, I just go, you know what? Let's just start from here, from the heart, and then it just come on its own. So this, today is the context of what our discussion will be on stepping out of your own way, whether it's on your personal and divorce, brand, businesses, how do you make it as a personal day-to-day, -day, living it consciously and also making it like the wow factor in it, yeah? So before that, let me introduce all the four amazing panelists first. First, we have Christina. Christina McLaughlin from The Vibe Tribe. And Christina has a passion of storytelling and co-creating. Um, and for the last two decades, she has been doing work in the hosp hospitality, brand and event management with holistic lifestyle design. She aligns ethical brands and individuals by creating strategic brand story, telling behind the scenes for the better good of Mother Earth and humanity. That's amazing, Christina. Secondly, we have the amazing Leaf Low, Reebok brand ambassador. Liv is the host, fitness entrepreneur and yoga instructor. And Liv uses her voice to activate change in the community. As Reebok brand ambassador, Liv is truly a vision in the industry. We have our gentleman, the only <laughs> rose among the thorns. <laughs> Rodolfo Young. Rodolfo is an international speaker, author, coach on topics of self-discovery and personal development. A former life as an army special ops in the US military, wow, to now on a mission to inspire a million hearts. He's now on 600,000 hearts, by the way. <laughs> he has shared the stage with top transformational leaders like Deepak Chopra, Marian Williamson and Anthony Robbins. And last but not least, Yana. Yana Fry is spiritual life coach. She started her life in the Soviet Union and her passion is to inspire people to follow their wildest dreams and connect to their hearts. When she was 20, Yana left the country with $100 in her pocket, traveled the world and built her career as a spiritual life coach and mystic and adventurous. That's amazing. Okay, so we'll start on the mind. Anyway, we, this is the mind track, so we will look a lot on, we will explore a lot on, about the mind. Uh, I wanna start with Liv. So Liv, a lot about mind, you know, when you first started off, you were a host, you're doing MC work, and then you started your own fitness business. Um, and then you pivot along the way up until today. What were the mental triggers to, to when you say, hey, this is not only the job for me. I can kind of like move around and see other things. When was that and what is it? All right, well, it's really quite personal to be able to talk about something like this. Um, yeah, it takes a lot to be able to kind of analyze you know, where you come from and why you've, you're doing what you do. And I think out of all the panelists, I mean, not to say that everyone is not personal, but I'm talking from extremely, extremely personal point of view. So just if you have that in mind as well, just from a personal experience. Um, I would say that just going through my entire life, there are certain pivot moments, as you said. Um, and some of them have been huge catalysts. And I think that the biggest one that I can talk about would be the first time that I really had a conscious moment. Like the first one that really hit me really hard and I had no choice but to listen to it. So I was living in Tokyo. Um, I was modeling at the time and studying in university. Life was great. Um, independent, life is wonderful. Um, and then the earthquake happened. Um, a big tsunami hit and the whole city just completely shut down. Um, 
I'm very lucky to say that nothing personally happened to me. I wasn't in a vulnerable position, um, but a lot of people were, and there was a lot of lives lost that day. Um, and I think that it was a real shake-up moment for everyone who was in the city itself. Um, just being completely taken and shaken and being having this united experience, the whole country um, just put at a complete standstill. So you couldn't work from that day on for at least a month or so. You couldn't get around. Everything was cut off, water, electricity, everything was being saved. There was no... Um, it was just it was just completely not able to function as you would on a normal basis. So for me, having that experience, um, it was a real wake-up call to be just to look at it from another point of view and just looking at everything that I had around me, being like, are you okay with what you have? Like, what if you died at that day? You didn't, but are you satisfied with your life? You know, if you did, like, would, what would you have passed on? What would have been the message that you had sent to other people? Um, would it have just been, you know, oh, she was, a, she was a great party girl and she took nice pictures? Or would it have been that she made an impact or she, like, had a really good connection or some kind of message? So that was the real thing that grabbed my attention and turned me around. Um, so from that moment, I think that everyone has opportunities like this within their own life. Mine was very big, um, but whether they be big or small, being able to acknowledge those moments and being able to take that conscious decision to change your own life. So from there, I completely changed countries. I moved from Tokyo to Singapore. I changed careers. I became a yoga teacher as well. And I got married. I just completely changed everything. Um, so yeah, that was my first real conscious moment. Um, and it was a real wake-up call for sure. Mm. And would you say the consciousness um, before when you're a model was less than it is now when you're a yoga teacher? I think that's a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think, know. yeah, well, it, it's just that you live in a certain, in a different bubble, you know? It's just you don't have to acknowledge those things. Um, you're given, you're, you're only at the surface. And if you, unless you want to peel the onion, unless you want to look deeper, you really won't. So when the blindfold is ripped off your eyes and you have to, like I think Stephanie was talking about that, you take the blue pill or the red pill, when you're given that choice and you have to make that decision, um, hopefully you take the, the, the right one. And I'm glad that I, I am happy where I am now that I did take the blue pill. Also with Liv, you know, he, she has a strong following and she has, I mean, she's using her influence and the reach, whether it's on social media or the work that she does in the yoga studio to also spread the message on health, wellness and really eco living. Um, do you see the digital communication as well? How is it today? Because everyone's behind a screen and you're talking, you know, from a screen, you're not really consciously communicating. Do you see yourself doing it differently? Yeah, the social media has been huge, especially for yoga. Um, I'm surprised though that ecology is not ingrained within the yoga philosophy. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really want to push and unite and keep put, putting that out there because people who do practice yoga are a little bit more aware and connected, but they don't have that um, connection to the earth for some reason. Um, and it, it's just something that I feel should be done. So that's my purpose right now, is to try to connect those dots um, and to try to help whether through the yoga class or through the music or through my wording or just through my actions, social media. Social media has been a great one, especially Instagram. Everyone wants to do yoga now because of yeah, because of Instagram. The yeah, <laughs> you know, yoga every damn day is like the biggest thing. Um, so it will continue to evolve, and I'm lucky to have been in the position where I did see that grow, and I did um, help that grow too. So just keeping that honest and open, and and that's also why I started Stretch City, um, a company that I created and moved on towards. Um, towards more yoga stuff, but I did create a company to connect the yoga community together, um, to be able to create a platform where everybody can be on the same level and share the, right, the same ideas in the idea within yoga. Um, so yeah, I think that 
changing from, you know, from completely 360 has, has brought a lot of opportunity and social media has been a great asset um, and hopefully that it will continue to be a good asset and to keep it real and to keep using, you know, venues like this and the hashtag live more consciously and to be able to connect those thoughts together. Um, that's where the world is going. So just have to keep up with that. Mm. Kind of agree more. Um, also, I mean, bringing that, I think, Christina, you work with a lot of brands that, you know, bringing back, giving back to Mother Earth. And I think we as consumers and brand business owners have the power as to make the change. In your experience with your PR work in all these areas, hospitality, branding, and so on, do you see the shifts? The, the shifts are slowly happening, so I'll just give you a little snippet about where I came from. I used to do a lot of luxury brands, so Louis Vuitton, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, all the amazing consumer brands, and my wake-up moment was one day I did an event for Mercedes-Benz and we spent three months building a building, an actual building with plumbing. And then the next day, a bulldozer came and just tipped the whole building over. And that was one of my many shifts, thinking I'm doing this amazing work and how can I create the same kind of work to not create so much footprint? So I am blessed, very blessed to be working with a variety of different brands from fashion. Um, I'm the brand manager for a food and beverage company in Hong Kong called Mana, which out of 70,000 restaurants is the only zero food waste restaurant. Out of 70,000 restaurants. We don't use any plastic, we recycle and compost everything. So I go into fashion, food and beverage. I then go into jewelry, ethical jewelry from metals. I then go into now potentially consulting for a beverage company based in Sweden. So I'm, I'm kind of tapping into to different brands. There is a shift happening. The challenge is the conscious movement um, and knowing that every dollar that we have, we have a vote. The power of the people is amazing. And that's what I'm trying to do through my platform is with every dollar you have, you can buy an H&M white t-shirt or you could buy a ethical branded white t-shirt. What's the choice? Yes, one potentially will cost more, which is usually the organic ethical brand. But the more of us that purchase and have the power with our dollar, it shifts. It will start creating that ripple where fast fashion starts becoming the B and slow fashion starts becoming the A. Where organic food, I was talking to <laughs> last night about, you know, do can we buy bro organic broccoli uh, one head instead of buying three heads for a cheaper price that's laced with chemicals like there's so many different angles we can go so the shift is happening slowly surely the tribe is gathering um, and and definitely the power of the people is is prevalent in many areas of of our world what would you say the the mindset change that's so hard convenience mm. It's easy to just not do something. Mm. It's easy to just wake up in the morning and be like, I'm not gonna go do yoga today. <laughs> or I'm just gonna sleep in. Or I am so hungry, I'm gonna buy that food that's wrapped in plastic with plastic forks and spoons with the plastic straw that's put into the plastic bag mm. because it's more convenient to do that than to chop up my vegetables and put it in a container. So it's convenience. and modern day society and hey, I am in this classroom every day, mm. shifting myself, you know, taking the time to mindfully think of everything that we're doing, which is my holistic perspective, mm. is honoring first and foremost yourself, you know? So yeah, like it's convenience. We're all about now, it's all about now. I think it's also about the unconscious use, right? Everything is just, okay, Let's just use, 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 and expect something to just throw. Somebody's going to pick it up. Somebody's well, going to do sight, it. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of mind, yeah. You put it in the rubbish. And yeah. how many of us think, what happens to that once it's in that recycled rubbish bin, which actually all goes into the same truck anyway? Mm. Um, but, you know, out of sight, out of mind. 
And, we, and, and I invite people to start thinking about what happens after that step. Because mm. um, it's not. It, you know, it's when, not. when I look at the mind, sometimes we buy stuff for no reason. Um, it's this unconscious purchases that you just keep doing to feel... Full. I don't know. Yeah, to feel the whole. I used when to be a great consumer. Yeah, I mean, hey, me too. I used to be an amazing shopper. Yeah. I lived in China. I had like seven different colors of Converse sneakers. I bought a dress every weekend. Katie, my friend here, knows. Like, it was great. And that was before I was aware that... And I was quite empty. Mm. I was... My mind and spirit was very empty, and I just kept filling it up with stuff. And I think there's you know. definitely that link, right, from your consumption in terms of the physical and the material to what's really inside, what are you really feeling. Um, and I think that being enough also has to start from the mind. Um, and that brings me to the point with Rodolfo, who's going to be the best to speak about this. This is a did you know fact that Rodolfo went on a yearly silent retreat. So he actually goes on a month of not speaking. I don't know how I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'll miss talking to my two-year-old niece. Uh, but Rodolfo, tell me why and really what was the benefit and impact it had for yourself? Well, so what the practice actually is, is I've done two complete years of silence. Not consecutively, but I did one in 2012 and then again last year. And, you know, when I went into it, it wasn't because of a, an idea that I was doing a certain practice. It was more, the first time was actually because of heartbreak. It was also a very personal story. And it dropped me in. And as I started to really look inside, and I think this is one of the key elements, and, and you said it beautifully, that we have to start with ourselves. You know, our own temple, our own body, is the macrocosm or the microcosm to the macrocosm. And if we don't start there, then how are we ever to expect that we're going to do anything outside? And so we have a lot of people who are being these major activists and like fighting to, to better the world, but they're not bettering themselves first. And so they either burn out or they never really have the full cup to do what it is that they're trying to do. And I knew for myself, even before that first year, that there was a lot that I wanted to do in the world. And I wasn't going to be able to do it at the place that I was at. And so I went in, and as I said, it was out of heartbreak that I originally went in. And I know human uh, patterns and behaviors normally to go out and try to distract ourselves to fill the gaps or fix the cracks with something external. And I didn't want to do that. So I went internal for 365 days Beautiful. and really looked to see where I needed to fix something only to find nothing was broken. Mm. It was just a story that needed to be uncovered. Especially with the mind, you know, whenever we come across a situation where somebody makes you feel angry, we tend to just react. Um, but how do we consciously communicate that or then take a step back and go, hey, you know, maybe I was also kind of introspect back to yourself. Um, did you get that with your silence? Like, because sometimes when you're silent, you hear more. You definitely hear more, especially the voices inside. <laughs> and people always say that, like, oh, and the bad one. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because there's this thought that the voices just became more because you went silent. No, they were there the whole time. And so it's, are you conscious of what's going on there? Mm. And the more that I was listening to those voices, the more that I realized all the projections I was making about people outside. So mm -hmm. all the stuff that I was thinking was going on outside of me was really my own reflection of it. I'm really starting to get to see that. Mm, beautiful. So, yeah. You know, also with that, it's, it's kind of like be okay. I mean, one, be okay that you're enough now in terms of the mind. Whether you're on a weight loss goal or on a, on a career path that you're not there yet, just be in that moment of enough is important. That I think today everyone's on autopilot and zombied out that you're just like looking at how much am I making? how much time do I, do I spend on this, you know? And you tend to not leave it purposefully. Um, that, that brings me to the point with Yana, because Yana, you speak about living fearlessly and designing your best life. 
I mean, right now we're stepping out on our own way. So everyone, just take a few seconds now, just close your eyes and really visualize and define what is your best life? How does it look like? How does it feel like? How does it smell like on a day to day? And right now, you're enough as to where you are. You're going to get the, there either way. And now you can open your eyes. So Yana, when you say design your best life, everyone's already visualizing how it looks like. Now you tell us the how and where to start. <laughs> um, you can start with yourself and you can start today. <laughs> Um, and I would say what is also important um, to understand what is really the most important to you. And kind of rounding up to what was, has been said here, my wake-up moment was also a personal story <laughs> when my first husband was diagnosed with cancer and when he passed away. And that's where my heart broke. And I remember that at that moment, what I realized is that time is everything we have. So time with ourselves, time with life, time with our society, time with loved one, that's the only currency we have. And that also was the moment when I felt that I'm going to change things here and today because I'm not sure if I'm going to have another five or ten years. I don't know it. And so when you think about your best life, and Farina just beautifully led you into this exercise, it is really about getting out of your own way, you know? And I like the word fearless because fears is something in our mind, and our track is today about mind and mm. consciousness. But it's interesting also, Rodolfo was talking, and I know you work a little bit, uh, I googled it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a lot about heart, right? Mm -hmm. so, so when you creating in your mind your ideal life, it's very important not to get trapped in your mental process. So it is not what you think you want, but it is more what you feel you want. It's what your body wants, what your heart wants. And then the next, so you have to identify that first. And then the next step would be just put aside all your fears. Like if you never had them, don't even work them through. Like just tell yourself, I'm fearless, I have no fears. I will never worry about past and never worry about future. And just start taking actions. Would you say fear is the common block? The common block, um, that's the worries part. The worrying, the worrying Worry. that you, yeah. So usually we would have the past experiences that we that brought us some pain and we rely upon them in making decisions or we're going to worry about something in the future that might never happen mm. so and i would say just just put it aside you know um do more tantra and <laughs> that's a good you know way to get out of your mind <laughs> so and you either, many is living many, many of us are living either backwards in the past with all our fears our doubts regrets or living too forward in the future. Exactly. And that's why we're never in the present moment. Mm. And the tricky part is to be happy right here, right now, is just to be right here and mm. right now. It's actually very simple. You know what I love is there's a similar thread. From Liv to Rodolfo and to Yana, everyone came, their conscious catalyst was a heartbreak. <laughs> you too? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and at, at the end of the day, it's all from here. And you know, when with, with looking at things holistically, which one comes first, mind, body, or spirit? I think it's hard.